everyone, and welcome to our latest intrepid adventure into the wild blue yonder. Now, I'm going to ask you to pull up a chair and give me a moment of your time as we delve into this next Warframe guide. Today is a Gara guide. The Lady of Glass has been in the game since the Plains of Eidolon's inception, and has since been a fantastic frame for beginners and veterans alike. Because she sits so early in the game and resources to craft her are confined only to the Plains of Eidolon itself, which means it's very simple to farm and build this lovely lady once you have all of her pieces. Gara offers a wide array of abilities that have helped her specialize in a more defensive style of play with walls, shields, and damage mitigation, allowing her to not only be good for controlling an area, but makes her great to solo with, as she is a very simplistic type of frame in the way you obtain and play her, and provides ease of access that perfectly fits for a new player, and these new players will also find Gara makes a perfect frame to initially help push their way through the star chart, unlike frames like Valkyr and and Excalibur who rely on raw damage, Gara has some infinite scalability which is really good for a new player to understand and can essentially allow you to push your way through missions without needing to know excessively how to mod a weapon and can more so rely on the frame abilities to do the work for you. For more experienced players, Gara also offers some great scaling potential as you get access to more of the rarer and later game mods. Modding her will op well opens a much wider variety of playstyles and functionality to give you veterans something to aim for and push to improve upon, which I think is very important when getting into Warframe, as a new player you want something that's going to have be fun to start with, something that'll help push past those difficult difficulty barriers such as boss encounters and all that jazz, and rewards for effort uh, whilst experimenting with builds and to then get a good result from those efforts you put in, in the form of super strong frame, uh, super good builds, and the result will then be you clearing the star chart and getting through missions at a much more rapid pace. And a majestic cod piece, because, you know, DE definitely has no lack of cod pieces. I mean, just look at the damn thing! It's huge! Why does she need it? Generally speaking, Gara is a control frame. She makes use of her fourth ability to create a barrier that can physically hold enemies back, whilst also slowing them, stunning them, and making them less of a threat, which is also probably her most used ability as well, the kind of ability you can fire and forget uh, for a while until you need to move again to a new location, although personally I find it a bit weird as she can, she has a second ability from her th three called Spectrage, if that's how you say it, which kind of does a similar thing but smaller and instead of focusing, instead of kind of focusing more on doing some damage, I guess? I don't know, it's a bit weird to me, but with most of Gara's out there, you'll lo be looking to keeping your two active for mitigation, using your four to ward off areas, and then using your one to synergize with those abilities to get some extra effects out of them that can help lock down an area, deal some damage, and you don't necessarily need to do that with the synergy and going into the finer points, and as mentioned, Gara's simplicity as far as her abilities go, is what makes her so viable for new players, is because even when you don't do these forms of synergy with her abilities, you still end up with a frame that is phenomenal for a new player to get used to the game with. So, looking at the dr the actual obtaining of Gara, as mentioned previously, Gara is obtained from the Plains of Eidolon Bounties. The level 5 to 15 bounties will give you the chassis on both stage 2 and 3. The level 20 to 40 bounties will give you the Neuroptics. The level 10 to 30 bounties will give you the systems. Keep in mind, it is it does have multiple chances of dropping these components. Uh, these will drop during the individual stages of the bounties, usually twice per bounty themselves, uh, on, the, on the differing stages for that matter. And the differing stages will generally have a higher percentage of chance of dropping towards the final stage. So the first stage that has a chance of dropping will generally be below 10%. And then the final stage that has a chance of dropping will be usually above 20 to 30% depending on the piece you're looking at. There's no point going into too much detail about the individual percentages as there's a lot to look at with it. Just to let it be known that doing the bounties will get you the pieces. Look at which rewards each of the bounties gives you and then just farm them out until you get them. Moving on to the abilities for Gara, starting with her passive. Gara's passive is called Glint. Essentially, this is, sort of plays on the idea that Gara has is made of glass and reflects light. Uh, if you want the TLDR of this, it's basically 
it, once you move within range of enemies, you have the percentage chance of stunning them when they look at you. This stun will last for X amount of time and it cannot be affected by range or duration. This stun does last for six, uh, 10 seconds and it also then opens them up to be executed like so. It's a nice little passive that doesn't need much forethought, but can very much depend on the map and surroundings as to whether this will be effective for you or not, and can then open up for executions if you're planning on doing nightwave missions or anything else of that nature. And it's great because you don't necessarily need to be keeping an eye on it for it to be effective. Gara's one is called Shattering Lash. Gara's one is a versatile, multi-purpose ability that will be one of your core elements of synergizing with your other abilities. This ability on its own, once cast, will lash a long glass sword out in front of her, dealing 800 puncture damage and knocking enemies down for a short period of time. If you are to instead hold your one, the sword instead becomes a whip type slash across ability that cleaves across in front of her, dealing 800 slash damage instead, and does a similar stun to the original use. Similar to Atlas's punches, this ability also gets benefits from the passive of Maya or Venka Prime. So if you really want to maximize this, using one of those two weapons for their passives will greatly improve the potency of your one. The damage of this is affected by ability strength and also gets affected by equipped melee mods that benefit base damage numbers, such as pressure point and elemental mods. So having some comprehension of modding and some just basic understanding of what you want to mod for is going to help you here. However, for the sake of simplicity, just see it as having a weapon that's a stat stick will work very well for you here. But even with that, even if you have a lacklusterly modded weapon, this will still deal in an initial nice amount of damage that will help you with lower level missions, if nothing else. Moving on to Gara's 2. Gara's 2 is called Splinterstorm, and is sort of her survivability ability here. This forms a barrier of shattered glass around her body that provides a mitigation buff to herself or an ally within 30 meters if you were to cast it on your ally instead. Like so. The initial mitigation of this is 70% damage mitigation overall, and enemies that come close enough will then take an additional 250 damage per second. They are within 2.5 meters of Gara or the ally effective. This can also be cast on an enemy and will hurt enemies for a similar amount of damage within that area and then make them vulnerable, causing them to take an additional 35% damage overall. If you cast this on enough, you will very quickly notice this is doing like a blenders type damage where if three of them are overlapping, you're going to be killing things rather quickly. Pick your poison, protect yourself or an ally, or expose weaknesses on an enemy. Either way, you should always try to have this active at least on yourself for the mitigation, as it is super powerful form of survivability that even unmodded can make Gara survive what most early game players that play anything else would die from. Both the damage dealt and the damage mitigation is based on power strength. Keep in mind that at 130% power strength, you cap your mitigation at 90%. So going above that is not necessary. And in fact, for most builds, you'll never likely uh, need to go above 135% power strength unless you're really looking to hit hard with your one. The damage of Splinterstorm is also increased by a stack shown in the bottom right. Uh, there are a few things you can do to up this, but for the time being, all you need to know is the bigger the number, the more your Splinter Storm does, and it doesn't have a cap. This is where the infinite scalability comes in line, and the higher you can get this, this can in theory one-shot any enemy of any level, and is probably where most of Gara's potency will come from right off the bat for the simplicity of it. So if you allow me to demonstrate this, if we start building this stack, you will see it will start dealing exponentially more damage. So if we engage this, now I'm going to explain more about how you build this later, but for the purpose of it, just watch as we start building. So if we use this method of building the stack, you'll notice the number goes up. The rate in which that number is going up is based on power strength as well, especially with the abilities. And there's a bit of a calculation depending on the ability you use to build that stack. But at 8,000 stacks of this damage, you'll see it's dealing a little bit more damage. If we take a step back and build even further, generally speaking, I would never say it was worth building it above 20,000 for most general missions. Uh, as 20,000 stacks will pretty much kill any enemy up to level 70 to 80, even 90. As long as you have energy to be building your stacks, it doesn't matter which of the methods that we're going to explain you use, as long as you're building your stacks in some way or another, you'll then be able to start dealing quite a lot of damage. And one thing that's great about your 
uh, glass shield as well here, is that it does push enemies naturally away from you. So if there's melee based enemies, they will be pushed away and slowly off the edge of the cliff to their utmost demise, like so. The Augment, and you'll see a bit of a trend with most of Gara's Augments, that they're quite a bit useless, if nothing more, uh, is called Mending Splinters. This will heal the ally using the Splinter Storm for three health, and additional health for every extra target affected by Splinter Storm. So if we keep applying it to more and more, it will then heal that target for more and more as well. It's a very simple augment, and honestly, it's kind of a waste of a mod slot, unless you're possibly playing solo. I mean, there's no real ne necessity of playing as a support Gara for healing, but it's nice to know what it does at the very least. Spectrorridge. Spectrorridge? It's up to you how you pronounce this. Spectrorridge is Gara's 3. Gara's 3 is a bit of an outlier, but nonetheless a very interesting ability. Gara will essentially summon 12 shiny mirrors. So if you choose an enemy to put this on. These 12 shiny mirrors will begin encircling its location. Enemies within X amount of meters are then tempted with cookies to move close and upon reaching the circle, the mirrors of doom, they will then generate an image of said enemy looking at them, tempting them into the circle. Once inside the circle, they will then be trapped like a crustacean in a restaurant. Anyway, uh, when they are inside the circle, they will begin attacking the mirrors, and once the mirror breaks, it will deal 800 damage plus extra damage based on the damage the enemy dealt to said mirror. Once six mirrors are broken, the rest of the mirrors will blow up, dealing 1,500 damage to all enemies inside the Ring of Doom. It's Again, it's going to be very similar to your four in kind of what it does, and can act as a good decoy to take enemies' attention away from a location you're holding off. And I suppose in synergy, it can be kind of nice to use this in conjunction with your other abilities. But on honestly, in my personal opinion, I barely use it. It's just fun to see them get lost in a sea of uh, wacky mirrors. If the shield shatters within the range of Splinter Storm, then 50% of the mirror's damage is permanently added to the stack of Splinter Storm's damage and the stacks therein. So there is some levels of synergy to add to your Splinter Storm stacking. So if you make use of this with your other uh, abilities as well. You can stack Splinter Storm a bit more efficiently with it, but because you're not likely to be modding for tremendous amounts of range, being within range of this specifically to stack your Splinter Storm isn't going to be as advisable as it would be just to do it the normal way, which we're going to explain in a moment. All the damage generated by Spectre Ridge is impacted by power strength and is then split between all of the I impact slash and puncture status types evenly if you build range the rings get bigger and you also get more mirrors meaning it'll take longer to explode as there'll be more mirrors you need to explode as it is always half the amount of mirrors required that are there as a total to in order for the mirrors to explode and the duration of the spectrage is as go figure affected by ability duration if you thought the augment for the splinter storm was a bit lackluster you won't see nothing yet boys the augment for the Spectra Ridge is called Spectro Siphon. Enemies that die within the Spectrophage or Spectra Rage, whatever it is we want to call it, have a 50% chance of dropping energy orbs. My suggestion, don't use this. I mean, you can if you want, if you really want to get some extra energy orbs, but it's not really going to make enough of a difference in the grand scheme of things in my eyes. It can be a little bit nice, but more likely what it's going to be is a bit of a waste of a mod slot that could have been used to make your abilities a bit stronger. Mass vitrification is Gara's 4, and this is what we all came for. It's time to build a wall, ladies and gentlemen. Gara will summon a massive wall of glass that will start expanding out as she channels her cast into it. This wall is a solid object that will prevent enemies from moving through it, and it also allows you to interact with it as if it was a physical object itself, allowing you to jump off it like it was a wall. This ability allows you to ward off areas that you so choose, and if you keep this in mind, you can also jump and cast it mid-air, allowing it to have a much higher range, as if you cast it on the ground, chances are it will clip into the floor. Some things to keep in mind with this is that initially it has a max radius of 11 meters and an initial cast radius of 2 meters, but modding for range will allow the ring to start a bit further out. However, much like Nova's uh, molecular Prime, building duration 
increases the time you channel for, allowing it to channel further. There are also some interesting things the shield can do to interact with your other abilities as well. Once channeling, you can allow the cast to complete, or if you run out of energy, Gara will then stop channeling. Upon stop, uh, upon stopping the channel, the wall will be produced with X amount of actual sides to it. If you allow the cast to go off fully, then you will end up with 12 actual segments to the wall, which are indicated on the fourth ability in your action bar. This is interesting to note because the more sides of the wall you have, the more acts of defense you have, as the enemy will actively tar try to target one of the individual segments to burst through. Each segment produced has 1,500 base health, plus Gara's initial armor value multiplied by 5. For each enemy affected by crystallization as it passes through them, the mass vitrification also converts a portion of their maximum shields and health into extra health for the glass barrier. Essentially, the more enemies that pass through this as it's expanding, the stronger the wall becomes. When a segment health is depleted, it explodes outwards and damages all enemies for 350 damage in range of 8 meters. Glass barriers last until all segments are destroyed or when mass vitrification is recast. Essentially, this is going to be a very strong way of keeping enemies off of your lawn. As kind of already mentioned, there's some interactivity here with the glass wall and the enemies. Enemies that come in contact with the molten glass are crystallized over three seconds, slowing in movement speed and attack speed until completely solidified in place, and this is going to last for 16 seconds. Crystallized enemies receive 50% more damage from weapons and abilities. Each enemy crystallized contributes extra health to the barrier, as mentioned already, uh, during the formation phase, based on a portion of their maximum shields and health. So, keep in mind that the bigger the enemy and the more health and shields they have, the stronger the wall will become. If you think the wall has taken enough damage and you want to reform it, you can shoot it with your wand to destroy it. Doing so will then send a wave of damage to enemies within 8 meters outside of it as if a singular segment had broken, but instead all of them have broken. Doing this is also a synergistic way of interacting with your splinter storm. As shown already, having your splinter storm active and then breaking said barrier with your 1 will cause you to generate a percentage of the wall's health multiplied by power strength into your stack of splinter storm. So if you pass it through the enemy and then break the wall, you generate a bit of an extra buff on top of that. This is then also multiplied by your power strength, so having some power strength will help you here as well. As you'll notice, there is a lot of synergy with your 2 and your 1 here. As mentioned at the start of the video, there is a lot of synergy that can be done with Gara, but you'll notice that the power and the potency of the individual abilities are strong on their own regard. One last little tidbit to note is the duration of your Splinter Storm is also refreshed whenever you cast your 4, which means you never really need to worry about it wearing off so long as you're actively casting your 4 when it's about when your 2 is about ready to run off. Again, your 4, your 2, and your 1 will have the most synergy with each other, which is why I mentioned earlier your 3 is going to be like an outlier. But there, having all of your abilities being cast at any given time is never a bad thing. And letting your potency of your Splinter Storm stack is going to be one of the most fund th fundamental things that allow you to see the fullest potency of Gara. There are a lot more things we could look into here, as there are a lot more semantics in regards to the minor details that can equate to some big potency out of them. But for the sake of a beginner's guide, I would hesitate in bringing these little bits of detail up, as it could get very complicated, as there's some very nitpicky little uh, calculations you can do to min-max this. We may look at that in another video, or I would advise you to maybe look at the wiki to see how these will work, as I will leave a link to this in the description of the video. But for the time being, that is all you need to know about the individual abilities. They are very strong, they're very powerful, make use of them. And as ever with these guys, we have a build segment. Before we do begin, remember, take the initiative. These builds that, are, that I am showing are merely my personal suggestions. Take any builds I show you and be explorative with them. Don't think these are the finalized builds you must use. They are just what I have found works for me. So, starting off, as with any build, the Aura Slot. The Aura Slot is personal suggestion. I personally always like Corrosive Projection because it's always going to help you no matter what. This first build we are looking at is a generalized build. It's going to focus very heavily on making sure you make the most use of your Splinter Storm. Right off the bat, we have... Uh, Constitution, we have Narrow-Minded for the duration along with Continuity to make your Splinter Storm last the longest. You have Stretch and Augur Reach 
and Cunning Drift for the range to make sure that the radius of your Splinter Storm is going to at least be able to affect enough enemies around you to deal damage and cause that grinder effect we men uh, mentioned earlier. We then have 130% strength through Intensify and... Actually, that's it. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, in turn, allows you to generate the 90% damage mitigation through your uh, Splinter Storm. Going for this type of a build will work really well because all of your abilities are dirt cheap anyway. Like, a singular use of your one with 175% efficiency will only cost you seven energy. So energy consumption is never really an issue with Gara, which is also why using her augment for the extra energy orbs, unless you're using equilibrium, is never really that necessary. And as with any of these guides, we also have a more new player friendly build. Now, as always, this is designed to be completable with one or two form at most. One form or more than likely. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can obtain this build with only using without using any former. Assuming you have a 7 capacity aura mod on at the given time. Now, with this, you're going to be using Streamline, Flow, Continuity, Intensify as your baseline mods. And as with a lot of new player builds, I do very much recommend trying to get some uh, extra health and survivability on there. You already have the damage mitigation through your 2, but having that extra bit of leeway to survive off of with Vitality is good. Now, Hunter Adrenaline, this is personal preference. As I mentioned, um, Gara is very energy efficient. But you're going to want to be spamming your abilities a lot with Gara. And Hunter Adrenaline can at least help you keep that energy flow going. If you don't use Hunter Adrenaline, and you may not have got access to it because it is something that's a little bit harder to get, uh, you can in turn replace that with Steel Fiber. Not only that, that will then uh, also allow you to make your walls a smidge stronger as well. So if we brought Steel Fiber in... That is also a good substitute for that as well. Again, this is a very simplistic build. It works well. It will allow you to get into Gara's playstyle, understand how her abilities work, and it's very easily obtainable. With this, you can then bridge the gap to then starting to add in your corrupted mods, your lure mods, and it'll help you understand build etiquette as well. And with that, that's the Gara guide. We've missed out some information in this one purely for the fact that there's far too much information to go into for one video. Maybe we'll do an extended video on Gara where we look at more of the nitpicky semantics in the future. But hopefully this video has been interesting. Remember, check out that new join button to support the channel. And if you want to be part of these YouTube videos in the process of recording them, we record them on Twitch. There'll be a link down below where you can come and join us and take part in them and actually be in the videos and help dictate how they end up being produced. That way, if I make a mistake, you'll call me out on it and make me look like a fool. And isn't that fun? Either way, Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see all of you lovely top hatters in the next video. Ta-ra.